Hello from Jonathan and from me. Welcome to Friday's Anglia Tonight. Now, later in the programme, the pop star who went back to school to give youngsters a music lesson they'll never forget. But first, this morning he was the leader of Essex County Council, a front bench spokesperson in the Lords and a Tory whip. Tonight, Lord Hanningfield holds none of those positions. The Conservative peer is facing six charges of false accounting, charges announced by the Director of Public Prosecutions this morning following a nine-month investigation into parliamentary expenses. Well, Victoria Webb's in the village of West Hanningfield near Chelmsford tonight. Victoria, another dramatic twist in the saga of the expenses scandal. Yes, it is. When MPs' expenses hit the headlines last year, a panel was set up of senior police officers and prosecuting lawyers to look into whether there should be any criminal investigations um, against some of the complaints made to the Metropolitan Police. Now, Lord Hanningfield was one of the cases that they investigated. Files from that investigation were passed on to the Crown Prosecution Service in December, and having looked at those files very carefully, they've now decided that there is sufficient evidence to bring criminal charges. Whether or not he was aware of what the day had in store first thing this morning, Lord Hanningfield was initially reluctant to speak to us. Oh, well, I'm not going to talk to anyone, I'm afraid. Do show that, I shall see you. But after taking his dog for a walk, he protested his innocence against the charges that would follow. I spent a lot more than I claimed, and so we'll just wait what happens today, and I'll be making a statement if I need to. Lord Hanningfield faces six charges under Section 17 of the Theft Act for false accounting. The charges carry a maximum sentence of seven years in prison. It's alleged that between March 2006 and May 2009, he dishonestly submitted claims for expenses to which he knew he was not entitled. The allegations centre on claims for overnight expenses for staying in London. Lord Hanningfield was being investigated over whether he was staying here at his home in West Hanningfield while claiming the overnight allowance. According to the CPS, records show that he was driven home. These files have been reviewed very carefully by senior prosecuting lawyers in the CPS, assisted where necessary by an external and highly experienced criminal QC. In four cases, we have concluded that there is sufficient evidence to bring criminal charges and that it is in the public interest to charge the individuals concerned. Lord Hanningfield was born in West Hanningfield in 1940 and has lived all his life in Essex. In 1970, he was elected to Essex County Council and has been the council leader for the last 10 years. He was made a life peer in 1998 and during his time in the House of Lords, he served as a shadow minister for transport, business and education, as well as being an opposition whip. Following today's announcement, he decided to stand down from his front bench duties there and the party whip was suspended with immediate effect. A few hours later, he'd also resigned as leader of Essex County Council. There is an issue that uh, everyone's innocent until they're proven guilty. So no, it's uh, not the end. I think in Lord Hanningfield's case, he's always um, protested his innocence and I'd want to see the outcome of the um, inquiry before I make judgment about him. But I know it will be a very difficult time for him personally. In Chelmsford, the parliamentary expenses scandal continues to be a talking point. Don't want to know any more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. We've had enough of them. <laughs> I'll be very much surprised at the next general election if the turnout is above 30% because I think everybody has had enough. In a statement, Lord Hanningfield said, I am extremely disappointed by today's announcement that I am to be charged. All the claims I have ever made were made in good faith. I have cooperated fully with the police throughout their inquiries. I totally refute the charges and will vigorously defend myself against them. Lord Hanningfield has been summoned to appear at the City of Westminster Magistrates Court on the 11th of March to face the six charges against him. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, West Hanningfield. Well, as Victoria says, Lord Hanningfield will go before magistrates in March. Three MPs are also facing charges for false accounting. And earlier, Phil Hornby gave us the reaction from Westminster. This is a never-ending saga. Yesterday, of course, it was payback time for MPs, and today three of them were charged too. But this is a reminder that there has, at the same time, been an investigation going on into expenses in the House of Lords 
as well. So tonight, Lord Hanningfield is no longer the leader of Essex County Council. He's no longer a Tory frontbencher in the House of Lords. We caught up with his party leader a little earlier and asked him, did Lord Hanningfield jump or was he pushed? I don't want to go into all the private conversations, but it's quite clear he is not on the front bench, he is not uh, one of our shadow ministers, and the whip has been suspended. I said right from the start that the police and the prosecuting authorities should feel absolutely free to follow wherever the evidence leads and to charge whoever or whomever they think right, and I think that is the only way we're going to clear up this mess. But this mess just will not go away, and in five weeks' time, Lord Hanningfield will be appearing in court just down the road from the House of Lords. Next, the continuing concern over the standard of our out-of-hours medical care. Well, yesterday a coroner ruled that a Cambridgeshire man given a fatal drug overdose by a foreign out-of-hours doctor had been unlawfully killed. The tragic death of David Gray has prompted a government pledge to drive up standards. But they're facing an uphill battle to rebuild public confidence, as Emma Baker reports. Rene Foro appreciates the importance of good out-of-hours GPs. But sadly, she has first-hand experience of the system when it failed her. Her husband, Derek, died in their home in Nauta near Bury St Edmunds three years ago. When she called an out-of-hours doctor, it took him two hours to reach her and he couldn't speak enough English to fill out the relevant forms. He came in, didn't introduce himself or say anything. He pointed at the bed and said, accident? And I said, no. Um, and then he pointed at the morphine drugs and said, how many you give him? And I explained he'd been given this medication to keep him comfortable. And then he gave me a form and said, you read, I know, understand. Rene complained to the company that employed the doctor, Take Care Now, who sent her a letter of apology. Take Care Now is the same company that employed Dr. Ubani, a German locum who accidentally killed 70-year-old David Gray with a huge overdose of dimorphine. TCN still provides out-of-hours care in four areas, one for NHS Worcestershire and the other three in our region, NHS Great Yarmouth and Waveney, NHS South West Essex and NHS Suffolk. The contract with NHS Suffolk will end in March. Meanwhile, NHS South West Essex says it's also looking to stop using the company. Yesterday, the government agreed to make a number of changes to out-of-hours GP services following a report into the current system. What we've got to ensure is that um, commissioning the contracting process involves local GPs more and that local GPs are also encouraged to participate in providing that care as well. Not very confident at the moment, I'm afraid. Not in the light of what's happened. I don't agree with this business of bringing people in from abroad and no, whatnot at no. all. So I actually live in Cambridgeshire and I still feel very, very safe. Yes, yes. Mark Hainsworth is a GP at Bilderston in Suffolk, at one of the rare practices that still provides local 24-hour care seven days a week for their patients, which he feels is important. I think patients want, as part of the service, responsiveness, they want accessibility, and they want to know and trust the person that they're talking to so that they can take the advice that they're given in an appropriate, at an appropriate level. After the tragic death of David Gray, it's likely many patients will now be calling for more GPs like Dr Hainsworth as they try to rebuild their trust in our out-of-hours system. Emma Baker, Anglia News, Nowton in Suffolk. Now, this next story will get you talking.